Hey there, Brother Sewing and Crafting family, Angela Wolf here. And today we have May Flom, and I'll give you a quick hint of what she's going to show today. What do you always ask for every fall, right? I'll let you leave a comment, see if you guess it. But in the meantime, did you start your bag so along from last week? The quilted grocery bag? You only had one job between now and Thursday, and that is to grab your fabric, embellish it, and then we'll cut our bag and go to step two on Thursday. So if you missed that, go back to Brother. It's on the Brother Sews YouTube and Facebook pages. Hop on there, catch up on what's happening, get your supplies, and I'll see you on Thursday. So in the meantime, did you guess what May's going to be showing you today? Because it's going to be a lot of fun. Pumpkins. Hey, May. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm so excited. Uh, you know, it kind of feels like fall today. And then when you came onto the show and I saw your cute pumpkins, I'm like, oh my gosh, it is fall. We're moving into fall so fast. Where did summer go? I know. I wish the summer weather would go away though, because we've still got a lot of that lingering. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's saying hello, hello. May, it's so nice to see you. So anything exciting happening in your neck of the woods? Oh my gosh, yes. We have one, one of my daughters is getting her, well, hopefully, I don't want to jinx anything, hopefully getting her license today and the other one moves to college next week. So it's a big wild fall here wow. at my house. That is a wild fall. That's busy. <laughs> well, in it the meantime, is. I know you always have fun things for crafting. And what do you have for us today? So today what I have, you could either do this, I mean, you could use this in a lot of different ways. You could do this indoor or outdoor. Um, so I know like yard flags are very popular to put like on your front porch, maybe in a little planter with some flowers. So we're going to be making a little, a little yard flag with Minnie Mouse. And it's up to you what material you want to use. I, today what I'm going to show you is actually a no-sew version. So if you don't sew or if you just don't want to pull out the sewing machine or get that going, we can certainly work with that and do a no sew version as well. Super easy, super quick, and it's all in our Scan and Cut DX. So that's always a really fun thing when you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you've already got patterns ready to go. Oh, and those pumpkins are so cute. They're so yeah, cute. Yeah, so this one here, this one is, is more traditional colors. Um, I decided I wanted some peach going on this fall, so I did this one in peach instead of the bright orange. So just to see there's different ways. And this one I did sew, but you don't have to. This one I also did felt, which I would keep felt inside. I feel like most fall weather you probably don't want to go outside with felt, but you could. So you could use those inside. You could use these inside on the wall. You could do it outside. And all you need, the supply list is really easy. So I like the iron on the heat transfer vinyls. This one I use sparkle for the black, as you can see, and then kind of a pearly white for the eyes and then a peach color for the pumpkin. And then this is just a wooden dowel that I got at the craft store and some ribbon. And then it's up to you if you want to stitch it together and make it sewn you can or I'm going to show you the other version today with just some hot glue so it's super super easy we're going to pull our machine out here and it's just a great reminder if you have one of these DI models one of the Disney models don't forget to take a look go deep diving because you may surprise yourself there's so many patterns in these and like we've got our reindeer our Christmas joy We've got our Mickey Mouse pumpkin and then our Minnie Mouse pumpkin and little treat boxes, little wintry Christmassy treat boxes and little Halloween treat boxes. So there's a lot of different options in here. And I've cut these a lot of sizes for a lot of things. So you can do lots and lots of different projects with them, depending on what your mood is. I just thought um, I would just love to see one of these either hanging in my yard or on my wall. I just think that would be great. So the first thing you're going to do is decide your size. And remember, you can go really, really big. You can go, I think it's 11 and 3 quarters. I think we're going to go 7 inches wide. I just need to make sure. And you can use, if you have a ruler, you can use that. But you could also just use your scan and cut mat. So we can just count squares. 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a little bigger than eight. So seven would be fine. I could actually go a little bigger. And then you could also have started, I'm way down at the 24 end inch because I'm using a 12 by 24 mat today. Um, but if I had started at the other end, I could have just set this down and just seen the number. I just have other stuff at that end of the mat. So that didn't quite work or it wasn't going to work, I should say. Okay, so I'm going to go seven and I'm going to say, okay. And then the great thing about these layered designs, it's going to pull you to the screen and you are going to decide which pieces you want. So I'll select the eyes first and I'll say, okay. And then you're going to click add. So I want to put all the pieces at once. So then I'm going to put the bow and I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to, so I'm not worrying about anything, mat placement, none of that. I'm just adding pieces. Now this part, the yellow, this is the background. So if you click here on this one, you're going to see all of the pieces together. You click on this one or whichever one, you'll see the piece that it is. So it'll light up in color, whatever the piece is. This is the background that would go behind. And that is the piece that would show through. You can see the little yellow poking through. That's what that is. If you want to use that, that's great. If you don't, you don't have to. And I am not going to. Um, a couple of reasons. Really just I liked the cream showing through the peach and it saves a layer, saves a little material. So you can do without if you would prefer. And I'm going to press OK. Now this will all fit here. You can see this is a what a 12 inch mount would be. Here in the tools, you can do the cut area so you can change what size of mat are you working on. I just happen to be working on a large mat today. So when that happens, what's going? you're going to see a little arrow here. When you push that down, it's going to show you the second half of the mat, which right now I don't have anything on. But when we space these out to cut, that will change. So let me pull my mat out here. And on my mat, we have three. I just need to pull the dust cover off here. So I already loaded our mat up with materials. I have the black, the white, and the peach, and they are all face down, meaning what you see here is the heat, the heat reactive, like the adhesive side. So this is the back side that you see. And I'm going to load my mat and just push the button to load the mat. And then I'm going to scan the mat so I can see where my material is. And that's why I didn't worry about, well, where are my materials and what's going on? And if you were trying to do this really large scale, this 12 by 24 mat is great because you would be able to cut lots of large pieces at once instead of just trying to cut one piece at a time. I know I like to multitask, so I want everybody cut. I want everybody done all at once if we can. Okay, so this is going to show me where to move. And if I keep pulling this pumpkin down, the screen is automatically going to move to the second part of the mat. So you don't have to worry about if you if you do this and you go, oh, I've disappeared. It's OK. You're just you just pulled the material down. So low enough so that the machine is trying to auto correct there for you to put your material where it needs to be. So we just want to make sure that our pieces are on the materials and you can see there that they are. And we're going to cut. And it's only going to take, let's see, it says it's going to take two minutes. Half cut is turned on. You change that here in the settings. Half cut on is for stickers, for vinyl, for things where we want to cut the material but not the backing sheet. We're going to say OK. And that should just take a minute there to cut. And the great thing about these layered patterns is it's going to cut all the pieces the size they need to be to be the correct proportions to the other pieces. So you don't ever have to worry about if the eyes are big enough or the whatever the, whatever the pieces are. They're also going to cut the eyes and nose here cut together and they cut exactly like this. So you'll know that they're all going to be exactly in the order they need to be 
in the in the position they need to be so all you have to do is just place it where you want it and heat transfer well in this case heat transfer so while that cuts i will just grab my supplies here as needed which i think we're in pretty good shape we've got our iron ready i've got my mat and you can get really fancy with this if you wanted to you could get into all sorts of things you could get into i mean whatever you would like really you could get into rhinestones you could add flowers i know i was playing around with if maybe like a little flower would be cute on here you could add i mean you can add whatever you would like or whatever you would have maybe you have buttons that you want to add you could certainly do that there's really not a limit here to what you might like to add now what i'm going to do and i'm a little off camera because i'm trying to see in my light what's going on here i'm just going to be checking my vinyl to make sure that everybody cuts through and i'm going to go ahead and pull the mat out so we can do that and i usually have a little pick tool here but it's being oh there it is okay we're gonna grab the little pick tool i just see one of them i have a couple and <laughs> I would be they sitting here going, where did I put that? That's usually- They love, well, they love to hide. They're right in plain sight. I know they are, but they love to hide. So I like to check the vinyl and make sure that it cut through the way that I expected it to, especially when I'm trying to take a shortcut here and cut all the vinyl at once, but it's not all the same. It's actually three different finishes of vinyl. So by checking it while it's on the mat, if for any reason I am wrong and it did not cut appropriately, we would be able to just, okay, so the eyes are good. Now I'll just check the pumpkin here. The pumpkin's a little tricky to see right now. Okay, looks like everybody's good. So I'm just gonna push my scan and cut. Sorry, scan and cut, you're just gonna get pushed out of the way here. And I'm still going to leave it on the mat. That's something that I, it, it's definitely personal preference. But when I'm working on something like this, if I leave it on the mat, here's the thing. If for some reason I find I was very, very wrong and there's a spot that is tricky or is not cut through properly, I can just stick it right back in the machine so long as I have not changed anything. So in other words, as long as, oh, there we go. As long as everything stays exactly where it was, if I need to stick this back in the machine, I can. And this peach, I'm just not convinced on. The peach is one of those, there's lots of different kinds of heat transfer vinyl. And some of them are trickier than others. So for example, that peach one is one that's like a sport, which can be really great for using, except that it can also be kind of sticky in how it removes. So I just keep that in mind when I'm working that if I've got a tricky material, I'll leave it on the mat. Now the, the glitter, it's not fun. The glitter vinyls are almost always my friend. The glitter vinyls are always really polite with me. You guys will have to share if you've got um, favorite finishes or finishes that you find are really useful or really easy to work with. I find that the glitter tends to be extremely forgiving and user friendly. So it always ends up, plus I love, I love the glitter without the mess. So it tends to be a favorite of mine. Let's see. And as we always remind you, work nice and slow so that if there's an issue, you can sort it out before it becomes a problem. Like I can see I've got, got a little sticky spot right here on Miss Minnie's eyeball. So right here, there's just a little spot that doesn't quite want to get pulled. And I'll get it but I'm going to get everything else pulled loose first. 
Another thing that I can do here is when I have the vinyl that I definitely know is not a part of the party, it's not going to be in, in the finished project, I can trim it off so that I can see what cut funny and what is kind of making trouble for me here. Okay, there's this one. And sometimes it's not that anything cut funny. Sometimes it's just that the way that it's pulling, it needs to just have like a little, just a little help. Like right here, I think we just need a little help. Where I'm just kind of tapping it with my pick tool here. And there it goes. There seems to be a little funky piece. There we go. Now, if we're not happy with it, so like this, if we're not happy with something or if something broke, I'm going to show you how you could cut a different one or another one. If you, if for some reason, you know, you've got your whole project here, right? And one part, or maybe, maybe you got impatient. You can see her eye, like the little, the little tiny corner popped off. Now, if that bothers you, then you would want to fix it. If it doesn't bother you, then you don't have to fix it. And then we're going to take a look now at our pumpkin. Okay. And remember that the trick with these little pieces, I feel like the, it really helps me to have the, the light, you know, I'll just kind of move things around and the pick tool helps because I can just kind of use it as well to kind of come in and trim up as needed. So looks pretty good. I know we we're having a little bit of stickiness and I decided to circle back. So this one, because it's the sport one, I'm going to show you two different things here. I'm going to show you, um, number one, I'm going to show you, we're going to recut this and then I'm going to show you how we can cut a second pair of eyeballs if some, or piece, this could be any piece, should something go wrong. So here on the machine, okay, when this loads up, what we're going to do, if you put select next part, it's going to erase your mat. It's going to take you back to the screen where you select which piece. If you push finish, it's just going to send you back to the mat that you were just at, which is what we want here. I'm going to show you both. Now I'm going to go back. I am not going to touch my pumpkin here, but I am going to delete the eyes and I'm going to delete the bow. Leave the pumpkin. Don't touch it. Leave it right where it is. And we're going to select cut and we already have half cut turned on. So basically I'm just having it recut the pumpkin. Okay. I'm just having it, having it recut so that the pumpkin and it'll only take yeah, one minute just to make sure instead of battling it. And especially when I'm working with bigger pieces of material and expensive material, vinyl's not cheap. So when I'm working with these bigger pieces, more expensive pieces of material, and I'm not a hundred percent sure that the vinyl is going to be crisp. My options are either just let the machine recut it because I was cutting different materials. And that's something to remember too, that the auto blade went off of, I think it was probably the glitter, but it might've one of these two, whichever one I selected first, that's what the auto blade is depth checking and going off of. So if the depth is different, if the material texture is different, sometimes you're not going to get the same cut through everything, or at least it's not going, it's not going to work quite as well as you would hope on absolutely everything because of the way that that is. So what you're going to want to do, and that looks like we'll do one more. I'm going to cut it through one more time just because not that I don't trust it, but I just don't trust it today. So, and not the machine to be clear, the, the vinyl, the sticky vinyl. And we'll also grab our white. So I'm just going to grab my white vinyl here and we're just going to pick a little piece off of it and we don't need much and when I don't need very much I try really hard to 
not use too big of a piece. Just if I have scraps, I go there first, but I happen to know I have used up all my white scraps. So I've just got a piece of that white vinyl that will recut because I got too eager and I tore too fast, which we talk about. I know we talk about not doing that. And I went and did it, of course. But you know what? That's handcrafting, right? That's sometimes that's how that goes. All right. So I'm just I'm checking here while while it goes and I am betting. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we got a nice smooth exit here for our pumpkin. You'll see the difference here. Um yeah, look, now we're like, wee, there we go, real fast and easy. See the difference there? All because I just paused and said, you know what, this, this is not quite the way I think it ought to be. I don't think it cut as, as thoroughly as it could. And part of that, again, is some of these materials are just a little tricky and a little sticky. And that's just one of those things where you just, you learn about it and you have patience with it. Because if you're trying to get the machine to do something just so, sometimes you just need to give it a little help. So we've got our mini, we've got our bow. Now we want to fix up our eyeballs just so. So if you need to recut something, and this is helpful, I mean, there's lots of reasons, right? Maybe we weren't focused. Maybe we put the wrong material down. Maybe we forgot to do something. I mean, we're all crafters, so you, I'm sure you have lots of stories to share. There are lots of reasons and, and things that can happen that would cause you to have a need to do this. Now, last time we picked finish, remember, so that we could go back and adjust. If you click select next part, it starts you back to here. And the reason it pulls you back to here is to select the next piece in your pattern. So a lot of times if you're doing real big, you might need multiple, or if you're cutting different materials, you might need to cut multiple things multiple times. It's a really handy feature. And if we click OK, it's automatically sizing. And if we click set, well, there it is. It is just going to pop right up. And if I want to be sure that my eyes are in the right place, I'm just going to scan that mat in really quick. And it takes a little extra long because I've got my extra big map, but that's okay. It's only going to take a moment here to scan. And you know what? I would always much rather scan and be sure than not scan and be wrong and find out something wasn't right. Okay. So we got that in the center there. And it's always the same. Select cut. Half cut, if it's already turned on, it stays turned on. And there you go. And then I'll just make sure my iron is turned on over here so that we can assemble. Let's see, hot glue is on, hot glue is ready. I always like to take the time when I've got my scan cut running, I like to take the time and see, you know, if, if my tools, like in this case, I've got my iron, Got my hot glue gun. Is everybody ready for the party once we do this? And I'm just going to make sure that cut right. Yep. Okay. So we've got, well, these are the eyes that we're not going to use. Oh, good, Patty. I'm glad that helps to see resolving. I actually, sometimes I know going in because I've made samples where tricky spots are or things that maybe would be a little on the trickier side. So I try to bring those up on and let them happen on purpose, just so you guys can see some fixes to issues. Now you can place your pieces together. Nothing is permanent. It is sticky because the pieces are on that transfer material, but you can place your pieces and play with your pieces like this because these are heat transfer, nothing is going to adhere. Nothing is going to happen until we get the iron out, which I think is really super nice because if 
nothing is happening until I get the iron out, it means I can really get comfortable with everything and make sure that I'm happy with how everything is going. Okay, so we've got our material. Now we test nice and slow. And this is a new kind of a pearly white. It's a new material to me. So I'm not, oh, and I see how that happened last time. Okay, so I see. So if there's a little bit of a sticky spot right there in the same spot, so I'm gonna be more careful this time. And you know what? We're always learning, right? We're always learning. We're always picking up new tricks, but also learning what not to do when we're crafting. And sometimes you think you've got it and sometimes you do not. That's okay. All right. So I'm going to get the outside pieces gone. I just find it easier if I've got a tricky spot. I find it easier to work with all the spots that are working well first before I address any tricky issues, spots. And so snipping that. So now all I've got is the middle, same as last time. But the difference is I didn't pull really hard when I saw a spot getting stuck that I thought I could just pull my way through, which was not accurate. So it's just kind of a little spot here that's wanting to stick it is cut through it's just one it's the there's something sometimes with the materials and it can be if the vinyl is old it can be if it's just a certain type of material you can just kind of try to separate or try to get stuck and that's when you want to get in here with your pick tool and just be very gentle right and just kind of use that pick tool or whatever you've got if you have like an embroidered long embroidery needle sometimes that'll work to just kind of help you gently lift and fix. And there we go. Now we have eyeballs that are even, nice and symmetrical. All right. So here is my felt mat that I use. And here's my piece of felt. I'm making this on felt. It could be fabric. It could be canvas. It could be whatever, whatever kind of material you're looking at and thinking, oh, well, that would be pretty or I would like that then that's a material you could use. I mean, as long as it'll cut, as long as it'll work and cut through, you're, you're good to go. I just need to figure out, we dropped, looks like I dropped my, my bow. Well, that's, isn't that fun? Did it go under my desk? Well, you guys are my witnesses. We cut a bow. <laughs> Is this when we do I Spy, May? Let's see. All right, Patty, do you see? I think, bug? okay, you guys I Spy. Let me look at the other side of the desk and see if it went flying. You just had it in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and it must have gone flying because now it's, maybe okay, it's under the is, desk. Let me take a this peek. This is you hilarious. Fly. I'm going to see. All right, let's look. I'm going to put my glasses on. We see May's bow. Hmm. Oh, I got it. <laughs> It went under the sewing machine. <laughs> I tell you, you just never know. <laughs> Found it. Okay, so when we iron on what we want to do, and I'm going to put it towards the bottom here. And if you want to measure, you can, or if you want to just eyeball it, you can. There's not a wrong answer on that. Whatever you would like to do is totally fine. I'm just going to get out my press cloth just to kind of prevent the iron from overheating there. And then I'm just going to press all over. And we're starting with the base layer. So in this case, our little pumpkin friend, the pumpkin base, if we had done that other, that yellow layer, we would have started with that. And depending on how hot the iron is, depending on the material, several factors, you may need to keep pressing for a while or it might go really fast. So I like to check in, just kind of move and press here. I like to check in on it each round. And I won't even lift if I look at it and I'm seeing like, I can already see the edge is not adhered. 
I'm not going to start lifting it up if I can immediately see that it's definitely not done. We don't lift it up. And we have it on no steam. Remember for iron settings, this is a very old iron. I have, if it's not on all the way hot, it's not hot at all. So your iron may be different as far as how hot um, you need to go. You can also always use a heat press if you have a heat press. And then I like to let it cool off a little bit before I go checking it. Um, you can, I like to use the, the cloth, of course, but you can always um, do what I'm doing here, which is just, I like to kind of put a little extra pressure on the edges when I've got the base pattern, at least, just to make sure I hit them all. And I really can't get them all if I can't see them all. So I like to kind of do that. It's very, very hot right now. So I like to give it, give it a second, give it a little shake before I pull it off. And then I just kind of watch here. If I see an area lift up or not look like it's not quite perfect, like right there, I'm not going to worry about it. And the reason I'm not going to worry about it is because we've still got more layers to go. So especially if it's right here, well, we're going to put the eyes here and the bow here. So we're going to hit that area with more heat and quickly. And you want to watch out. If you have pets, make sure there's no little pet fuzz because if you get like, say, a piece of pet hair or your own hair that goes under the vinyl, but also out on the side, it will absolutely stick and it will be stuck and glued under that vinyl forever. So take a look and make sure you don't have that. And I like to keep the bigger piece, I like to keep the whole pattern covered only because it has happened twice and I would like to never ever have it happen again where I accidentally put too much heat on an exposed piece of vinyl and it melted. And you guys, that is just depressing. It is not fun. It makes you sad. <laughs> it's wasted effort. You know, there's just nothing good about that. So I just always, if I have a larger piece, I just always keep that covered. Even with my cover here, I just always try to keep that covered up and keep that as safe as I can. Okay. And I saw like her little nose wanted to start to lift there. So I'm going to give her little nose a little more of a press. And if you cool this all the way down, and it has happened to me before where I was sure that I had it just right, cooled it down, and then there was some spot that wasn't quite right, just don't toss out this paper, the transfer material, immediately. Hang on to the transfer material because you can always press it, repress it if you had to. Okay, so now I'm pulling off enough to get my bow in. And you'll notice I do just keep putting those spots, the layers, I just keep putting the whole thing back down. Just, it cannot hurt to protect my design to keep things that are already heat set from um, over, getting overdone, I suppose we could say. All right. I think that was probably too fast, but let's, the glitter sometimes is really quick to, yep. Needs a little more. The glitter is really fast for me usually. Uh, this is another thing you can do if you're trying to do the edges, but you're trying to be more conservative. So you can, I've got the tip of the iron here up against, so I can see, and I'm, I'm lifting the back. So the back end of the iron is not touching, only the tip. So or maybe about the first two inches there. So that's another way you can do this to help it's just a very two-handed, very little, little more skill involved than just coming through directly, right? So, and again, that I'll just sometimes do just to touch up and make sure I got every little spot. I feel pretty confident here. Let's see. Oh, yes, that's so cute. So this time I did a really dark green instead of the black. So on the original here, I did the black glitter. And this time you can hardly see the difference, but it's very subtle. You can see... The green 
is just a little bit lighter than the black. Okay, and if you want to stitch it up, go, go right ahead. Go stitch it up. If you don't, that's okay too. And that's what I'll show you right now. So it's up to you how much excess you want to have. It's up to you. You know, do you want to have like, let's say you want to write Happy Halloween or you want to add other things, then you might want your flag to be a little bigger. If you don't want it to be, then you could also just keep making it smaller. That's also a completely valid choice. It's just whichever one you would like. I think I like this about here. Okay. And then I need to decide if I want it to be how firm exactly I want it to be. And I'll also probably take it like this. How many of you work on a grid mat? I mean, I work on a grid mat specifically so that projects like this, I can come in and I can line up. And remember, if you put your cover, if you put your dust cover on your scanning cut, you could do this on your scanning cut mat with the dust cover on. It would, it would protect. So you could have, if you don't have a grid mat, you could do it that way. So then it's up to me if I want to trim this now. I think what I want to do is get the hot glue involved and and glue it and then trim it. That way I'm sure that I have things where I want them and things are nice and even. Okay, so I'm just going to lift up along here and remember hot glue is very, very hot, so be very, very careful. And I'm just going to go along there and I'm not going to go all the way to the very edge only because we don't need to because it is going to smush, right? It's going to, the hot glue is going to smush down. So we don't need to go all the way to the very edge. And I left enough room so that I can take this out because something, if you're using a yard, like a reusable yard flag for a project like this, you're going to want to be able to take the flag off. And then, and we're not using my reusable yard flag for this only because it was just too bulky and too much of a pain to try to get here in the studio and keep in frame. A doll is easier to demonstrate with. So that way you can remove the flag, store it for the next season. And then here on the back, let's see, I'll just get some decorative pinking shears here. And once the hot glue has cooled, and I'm not going to freak out about if it's exactly perfect. I'm just going to go along here and just trim just so there's not so much excess back here. This is optional. You could leave it alone. Um, you could just use like a trimmer, a different kind of trimmer there. I've got my little, my little scalloped edge there. And then as a last step, if there's anything, sometimes felt stretches. So if the backside of the felt is stretched a little bit or you don't like how the back looks, you can always trim a little bit. If you wanted to add more layers, you could do that. What I'm going to do, I've just got a little bit of glitter glue here. And just to kind of mimic the stitched look on the other, although this one I'll just do dots. So I'm just going to do little glitter glue dots just to show you how easy that would be. And fabric paint would work. Pens would work. Remember, look around. I'm a really big fan of like shop your own room, right? Shop your own stash. What do you got? What have you, what have you got around that would work? or that would be a good fit for a project. I mentioned canvas before. You could also, if you don't want a flag and you're like, I like this idea, but I don't want it to be a flag. You could make a zipper pouch. You could make a tote bag. You could make all sorts of fun things. So I'm just gonna finish up these little dots and we'll be done. It's not fun. I love decor projects and I love finding different ways to just I don't know bring bring different patterns and if you wanted could you add rhinestones could you add buttons you could get really wild with this and if you do be sure you're tagging brother we'd like to see what you're making or leave a comment on the on the live here after you've made something and share with us what you made now it's up to you if you want to go across the top two I'm going to go across the top just because I think I like the, the look of it square, but 
squared up and not have the top be naked, so to speak. And if you don't like, like if you go too light on some of your dots, you can always go back in and add more. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about anything, right? We're having our craft time. We're having our fun, creative time. So we don't want to be worried. We just want to make stuff and enjoy. So here we go. Here's the stitched version. And here's the not stitched version. Tiny bit difference in size I ended up being. And then here, so this is my peak, kind of my peach color. And then here is the original, the bright orange color. And this one is on paper, obviously. May, that's really, really, really cute. I love Isn't it? And you could go if you wanted to add Happy Halloween or some kind of seasonal saying. You absolutely could, but you don't have to. It's adorable. I don't know. I would love to see in the comments, are you going to sew or use the glue gun? <laughs> because I think uh, you could use that glue gun pretty darn fast. And you can Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'll be honest. The sewing did not take a lot of time. Um, and then to, to finish it, either either way, to finish it, I'll just, since that glue, the glitter glue is wet, so we don't want to get into that. Um, I just tied a little knot, and let's see if it'll go back on. It should. I just tied a little knot in some pretty ribbon, whatever. Or it could be ribbon. It could be twine. Uh-oh. Did I lose you? I think we lost May. I got her on her phone, off but I lost something. her on her other. So, May, we can see your hands, but we lost your voice. <laughs> Uh-oh. There you are. You're back. There I am. <laughs> super, so, super. So, yeah, to finish it, you could put any kind of ribbon. If you wanted to hot glue flowers or other stuff, If you, you could add multiple. If you wanted to make it, like, dangle and do multiple parts, you could certainly do that. There's lots of options. Oh, absolutely adorable. I would love to know in the comments because I see a few people here that were mentioning their stellaire. So if you did this with the sewing, you could actually do beautiful decorative stitches all the way across it. That would be, I would love to hear in the comments. And as you said, be sure to use hashtag brother sews and hashtag brother skin and cut so they can see what's going on. So may I, I have, scrolling down below, I've got brothersews.com, which if you all go there, scroll to the bottom of the page. There's a crafting blog and a sewing blog. Both have a ton of great information. And then also I've got May's website, mayflom.com. You can find me at angelawolf.com. May, you have anything new coming up on YouTube that we need to know about? No, just because I've been packing, packing everybody up for college. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been keeping busy with all of that. But there are, there are a bunch of things I have in the works. They'll just be a couple of weeks. Sounds fantastic. Well, until next time, everyone, happy sewing and crafting May. I'm going to bring this back up because this was such a cute project. Everyone, thanks for joining us. And again, I will see you on Thursday with the grocery bag sew along part two. Until next time, happy sewing. See you, May. Bye.